Hyperion recently unveiled their new hydrogen electric hypercar to the world. The company was formed in 2011 and hopes the new car, called the XP1, can be the spokesperson to showcase the possibilities of hydrogen. The name Hyperion is derived from the Greek words, meaning to go beyond the furthest point. However, I thought another interesting link was that Hyperion is also the name of an ancient Greek titan, who was the father of Helios, the personification of the sun, which is of course primarily made of hydrogen. But this video isn't about Greek mythology, so let's instead look into the engineering behind the XP-1 and get a better understanding of whether the bold claims of a thousand miles range and over 220 mile an hour top speed are achievable. Firstly, to address the elephant in the room, hydrogen as a way to store energy in an electric vehicle is a controversial topic. This is due to the low efficiency of what is referred to as the well-to-wheel process. This process includes converting electricity into hydrogen, transporting it, converting it back into electricity to drive electric motors. Also, around 95% of hydrogen currently comes from the steam reforming of natural gas, which is a fossil fuel. However, that is a topic for another video, as this video focuses on the Hyperion XP-1. By using some calculations, we can learn more about the specs of this car, as little information is currently available. Along with the range, one of the most striking claims is the expected weight of 1,035 kilograms, or 2,275 pounds. This is in the region of the newly designed McLaren T50, which has a curb weight of 986 kilograms, and the Aston Martin Valkyrie, which is around 1,050 kilograms. Hyperion claim they can achieve this weight whilst having such a large range and comparable speeds by using the hydrogen powertrain. In a very simplistic form, we can break different vehicle powertrains into the energy storage and the power delivery system. For an internal combustion car, we have a fuel tank and an engine. In a battery electric vehicle, we have a battery, inverter and motor. And in a hydrogen electric vehicle, we have the hydrogen tanks, a fuel stack to convert the hydrogen into electricity, and then the inverter and motor. By changing out the battery for hydrogen tanks and fuel stacks, the XP-1 aims to save a considerable amount of weight. So let's see how much this hydrogen system will actually weigh. Firstly, we can look at how much energy will be required for this car to travel a thousand miles, and therefore how much the fuel tanks will weigh. To do this, we can use this formula. Now, it looks pretty scary, but it's actually just adding up all the forces acting on a vehicle while it's driving. These forces are due to acceleration, rolling resistance from the road, drag, and ascending or descending a gradient. And by multiplying this all by the vehicle's velocity, we can determine how much power is required. But this is the power required at the wheels, so to find out how much is required at the hydrogen power supply, we need to account for some inefficiencies in the drivetrain and motor, which we can assume to be at about 92% each. So for the power requirement equation, we need some information about the car, like its weight and drag coefficient. Simply put, the drag coefficient is a measure of how well something can slice through the air. As we know, the weight has been quoted at around 1035 kilograms. However, some other numbers are not available. The closest car I could find with figures available was the Bugatti Chiron, with a frontal area of two meters squared and a drag coefficient of about 0.36. Also, the rolling resistance has been estimated at around 0.02 and the density of air at 1.23 kilograms per meters cubed. So we can use this equation at just one speed, but it is better to use a load of speeds from something called a drive cycle. Here we're going to use the standard WLTP, which has a variety of speeds every second for 30 minutes. By using the equation at each of these speed values and adding them all together, we can work out how much energy is used throughout the whole cycle. As a quick side note, when the power demand is negative, we can use regenerative braking, and this power would likely go into a small auxiliary battery. Due to inefficiencies in this process, we can assume we'll get about 80% of this energy back for later use. Don't worry if some of that didn't make sense, let's summarise it and check out the numbers. If I run all these numbers through the equation, the WLTP test cycle requires around 2.95 kilowatt hours of energy. The WLTP test is 23.25 kilometers long, or 14.4 miles. So to travel a thousand miles, the XP-1 would require 205 kilowatt hours of energy. 
but the actual hydrogen system is only around 50% efficient at converting the hydrogen into electricity, as the rest is wasted as heat. Therefore, we need 410 kilowatt hours worth of hydrogen. Extra power is also likely to be required for the infotainment system, pumps and climate control, so we'll add around another 10% and make it 450 kilowatt hours. This sounds like a lot, especially considering the largest EV battery packs hold around 100 kilowatt hours, such as in the Tesla Model S. However, hydrogen is very energy dense, storing around 35 kilowatt hours per kilogram. This is nearly three times as much as diesel. So if we need 450 kilowatt hours of energy, and a kilogram of hydrogen stores 35 kilowatt hours, we need around 13 kilograms of hydrogen. But this doesn't account for the storage tanks or fuel stacks needed. To see how heavy the hydrogen tank would be, we can use its storage density, which gives a relationship between the weight of the hydrogen tanks and the hydrogen. A top of the range hydrogen storage system, like the one by Emprox, has a storage density of 6.4%, slightly higher than the system used in the Toyota Mirai, which is about 5.7%. If we assume Hyperion are using some all new state of the art tanks, which have a density of 7%, this means for 13 kilograms of hydrogen, we would need around 185 kilograms of storage tanks. The next important number is top speed, as this will help us size the fuel stack. Using our previous power equation, with a speed of 220 miles an hour, accounting for all inefficiencies, we'll need around 515 kilowatts from the fuel stack, or about 690 horsepower. During acceleration, this power requirement will likely be higher, but this power can come from ultra capacitors or an additional small lithium ion battery. It is also worth noting that almost all of this power is required to overcome the drag, so if they can reduce the drag coefficient, this would be considerably reduced. Now we can use the power density of the hydrogen fuel stack to work out how much it will weigh. Using the power density of the fuel stack in the Toyota Mirai, which is 2 kilowatts per kilogram, the XP1's fuel stack would need to weigh around 260 kilograms. However, let's say Hyperion have a more cutting edge design, they may be able to reduce this by say 20% to around 210 kilograms, meaning the complete hydrogen system would be around 395 kilograms, including the fuel stack and the hydrogen fuel tanks. And this would be able to store 450 kilowatt hours of hydrogen or 225 kilowatt hours of energy available as electricity. For comparison, the Tesla Model 3 battery pack weighs 480 kilograms and stores 75 kilowatt hours, though refilling a hydrogen car is currently a lot more challenging than charging an electric vehicle. So the last bit of the hydrogen powertrain is the motor and inverters. If we say this weighs roughly the same as the ones found in the Tesla Model S, then we can add an extra 225 kilograms to the total weight, bringing the powertrain total to 620 kilograms which could easily be rounded up to 650 kilograms to account for the small extra battery that might be there, the ultra capacitor, and any other wiring. So to put this all into context, let's try and see how heavy the Hyperion car would be if we base it on the ultralight 2022 McLaren T50, with a curb weight of just 986 kilograms. So let's start by removing the weight of all the internal combustion powertrain. This is a pretty rough estimate, but it should give a general idea. So stripping this all back, it gives us a weight of 643 kilograms. By taking this value and adding it to the 650 kilograms for the hydrogen powertrain system, we get a total weight of 1,293 kilograms. Now this is about 25% higher than the quoted weight of the XP1. However, there is obviously quite a margin for error in my calculations. But what this means in my opinion, is that for Hyperion to meet this target, they need to make sure the build of the XP1 is as focused on weight reduction as it is in the new McLaren T50, with every nut and bolt taken into account. It will also likely require improvements to current hydrogen storage technologies to considerably reduce the weight of the fuel tanks and fuel stack. My main concern for the XP1 is the solar panels on the side, which due to their size and orientation would harvest an extremely insignificant amount of energy. But I want this car to work, and I want it to go into production, even if I'll never own one, as the expected price is around the million pound mark. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This channel is designed to highlight new technology that aim at a zero carbon future, but it is always good to keep some healthy scepticism. That being said, I can't wait to see how the development of this car continues. 
Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I can't believe the amount of support there's been. When I uploaded the last video, there were 13 subscribers. Now there's over 1,300. So over 100 times as many people as when I last uploaded. If you've got any suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.